everybody. It's Brian David Johnson, the guest editor for the IEEE Computer Magazine, the special issue on the world of making. And to pull together this issue, we uh, pretty much went around the world and talked to a lot of different people to write us articles and to give us their perspective on making. And the perspectives were quite wide and broad, everything from biology to design, from science and business to technology and entertainment, also education and just culture in general. And our goal for this issue was to give the reader really a snapshot of making in the year 2014 and, and what making really was. And today on the podcast, we have a really, really fascinating young maker. We have uh, Sam Baumgarten, and Sam has a really interesting project that he came up with, but Sam's also got a, a pretty rich history when it comes to sort of making um, and the world of making. So Sam, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Um, so just kind of give a quick background um, on myself. Um, I started really doing stuff professionally six years ago, but it goes back quite before that when I really started making and being interested in how things are made. Um, I mean, I've got a lot of memories from like when I was really young and just being interested in just really random things. But I've always really liked how things are made and how they work, and that's really translated into me loving to make things. I mean, I made things like small things like hovercrafts, and or not not exactly small, but um, I've made all sorts of things, small projects, but I've also done a bunch of bigger projects and Dismisser is um which is which is my company, which I consider something that I've made in like a project. Um So Sam, how old were you when you first started making? Um, wow. Um must have been I mean I started doing small stuff when I was six or seven. I mean, um when I was seven I made my first scoreboard, which is um for the um, for, for, for my school, there was a kickball game between the fifth graders and the faculty. And in first grade, which I would have been six years old or seven years old, um, I'm, I made a scoreboard for the game. And that was kind of like my first real project. But I've always kind of been doing little projects. And how did you get into making? What was your entry into that? Who, who or what really got you your start? I feel like I've always kind of had this kind of instinctual kind of desire to do it. Um, I'm sure that there were like a bunch of people, my parents obviously, and j just people I've been around, but I feel like a lot of it was self-driven. and just I've just always really been fascinated. So talk about Dismisser and where the, so it's a fascinating project. Where did the idea come from? Um, how did it take shape? And as you said, now it's your business. So where is it? Where is it going? Yeah, so that's actually a pretty fascinating question. Um, so I actually came up with it in seventh grade, and um, it was the first day of school, and there was a new principal. And the school, um, the current system for dismissal was there were these like placards which they put on each car's dashboard, and then they would walk down the line and have walkie talkies. Then they would read out the name on each of the placards there would be another person inside the school listening to the walkie-talkie and shouting out the names. And there was a bit of a communication break. Um, and so about halfway through through the dismissal, uh, I actually had the idea for dismissal. I was just kind of sitting around waiting for my parents to come. And um, I thought it would be a, a great idea to go out and talk to the principal who's really stressed out and running dismissal right in the middle of it. Um, so I went out and I actually pitched the idea during dismissal um, and she was kind of like, she didn't really think I was being serious. She didn't think that I was actually going to execute on it. And then I came in the next day with the demo, um, and I, I, I pitched it again, and I actually showed her a working prototype demo. It wasn't really put together. There was a lot of, um, it wasn't really an interface at the time, but it worked. Um, and then about a week or two later, I pitched it to the board of directors, and it, they loved it. Then over the like next year, year and a half, because I was fairly busy with school because I was still a student, um, or I mean, I still am, but um, I was kind of iterating with them. So I would make a prototype, I would change something, then the week, then, then the next week, I would show it to my teachers, I would show it to the principal, they would give me feedback, I would go back, fix it up, and that took about a year and a half to do. Um, and then about two, two, two years after that initial idea, 
um, when I was going to ninth grade, so the year after I graduated, that he implemented it. Um, and then it kind of went from there, and I started getting interest from other schools as well. Um, and the biggest limit, and so the idea just kind of built up, and now it's turned into a much bigger product. And um, the biggest limiting factor right now is my time, and I'm not able to actually support the number of schools that want to use it. So it's a, it's a wonderful problem to have. <laughs> so for our audience who, who hasn't had a chance to read your, your article in the IEEE Computer Magazine, uh, give them just a brief overview. of So how does this MISR work? Well, what does it do? Yeah, so um, what it does is so cars are coming into the pickup line um, at, at school to pick up their students or some of their friends from their carpooling, and they, they have a parking sticker that's on their windshield. And as they come in, someone scans the barcode, to, which is a QR code. And then the students are actually waiting in their classrooms instead of coming out to like a big quad. And then the names of all the students who have been dismissed because their parents are there, their names show up on the projector screens in classrooms, then they know that they can come out to, to, to come to their car. And what this really does is this makes it so that there are big crowds of people, which which speeds up dismissal a lot and also makes it so that everybody knows where people are to make communication much easier. Gotcha. So you not only saw a problem and made a solution for that problem, but also the Dismissor Project has also made you into an entrepreneur. Uh, what, what has that been like for you? You know, you still, I, you still have school, but what has it been like becoming a young entrepreneur? Yeah, so, and also one of the quick, quick things about my background, so I, I got my first internship. I, it, was, um, it was December of 2010. Um, and so that, that was at a really small startup at the time. There were four, four people, and now they've grown qu- quite a bit. They're actually closer to 100 people now. But um, So that, I actually feel like, was kind of the start of my entrepreneurship career because I actually started doing apps a year before that. But um, at such a small company, I, I get a pretty large impact, even though I was only 10 or 11. Um, but then going into Dismissor, it was, it was the first time when I ever had full control of a company. When I was managing the marketing, I was managing sales. And it's been tougher as I've gotten older and, there, and there's been more, more interest because um, a number of times ha- have I had to leave class in order to take phone calls um, because business still goes on even when I'm in class. Um, so it, it's definitely tough to balance both school and work, but I've, I've been able to do it. Um, and also on top of that, I also do a lot of consulting. So being able to kind of work the two into each other. I, I work a lot during lunch. I work a lot after school, and I work a lot at night. That's incredible. So, Sam, understanding that, you know, making and has always been a part of your life, as you said, that you, you've always been making your, the, your, the way that you think about things and see problems, and you've, you've turned them into – multiple projects, where do you think this, this type of thinking, when you look at your friends and your colleagues and the next generation that's coming up uh, behind you, where do you think that this type of thinking, that this notion of making and getting things done, where do you think that could lead us in the future? Where do you, where do you hope it could take us? So there are like a lot of different directions, and I feel like it's going to impact every single field differently. One kind of big trend I think we're going to see, and I'm not sure if it's going to be good or bad, but I, I think there's going to be a big increase in the amount of um, general like robotics that, um, that are being used in order to automate a lot of industries. So I think the amount of automation is going to go up because it's becoming way more accessible. You see something where you'd have to invest a million, two million dollars to do, if not billions. Now automation, because everybody's making, there's so much innovation going on the cost of, of automation is going down and kind of carrying that over to other things, the cost of everything related to making an innovation is going down, but there's so much of it going on. Um, it's, it's super easy to get components now in order to prototype ideas. 20 years ago, I, um, it would have been much harder for me to go out and, and get all the components needed to prototype something. But now there's stores which stock things just for prototyping. There's tech shops where you can go and, and you can you can invest this to, 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 to machines. 
Um, it's this accessibility, which I think is making in, in innovation and making much more common. Well, and certainly, Sam, the things that you've been able to make and what you've been able to accomplish in just such a short time is, is really, truly amazing. So if our audience wants to learn more about you or learn more about Dismisser or the, I'm sure the next project that you're going to come up with, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, so the best way is going to be t to check out my, my website, sambaumgarten.me, S-A-M-B-A-U-M-G-A-R-T-E-N.me. And if you want to learn more about Dismisser, go to dismisser.com. That's D-I-S-M-I-S-S-R-R.com. Well, Sam, listen, thank you so much for your article. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. I mean, I think your story is a great one, just showing what making can do, how making can transform your life, and really how making can really take all of us really into that, into a future where we have more people coming up with innovative ideas and bringing them into small businesses and having a true effect, having a true effect on people, whether it be that uh, – that kickball scoreboard, or just making uh, dismissal a lot easier. I think you're doing some really great stuff. So thanks for joining me today, Sam. Thank you for having me.